All right, hello all you lucky people, and I'm not talking about the lucky people who aren't watching this episode, I'm talking about the lucky people who are watching this new exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man coming up. Um, had the little fire burn through Napa County, well it wasn't really a little fire, it was a big huge fire, it's still burning, um, f over two weeks later, we're going on our third week starting Monday. Um, had to track the signs, didn't know how to do it, so I came up with this program. Let's jump into this exciting episode right now and see what the old sign man came up with this time. All right, hello, everybody. Welcome to this exciting award-winning episode of Bob the Sign Man. Um, so we had a fire burn through Napa County. Um, burned through Napa County, Solano County, Lake County, Yolo County, Calusa County. Still burning. Here it is on Labor Day weekend. Um, two weeks, about 80% contained, so it's burned its way through Napa Valley, finally. Uh, damaged a bunch of signs. So anyways, I'll show you a little thing on... Keep this in mind, all you sign extraordinaires, sign people out there, sign guys, sign whatevers. Um, what are you going to do if you have an, a disaster, a uh, hurricane, flood, fire? You know, this it seems like to be the thing now. Um, how are you going to replace all your signs? Be prepared. Um, I had a fire in 2017 I was pretty ready for. Uh, not ready for the fire, but I, I mean, I, I put together a little program. Since then, we've changed our... Um, our sign tracking program, we have a new one. So when the fire hit, my boss says, okay, go out and, uh, you know, track these signs. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> On the way out the door, I was like, well, what am I going to do? I have no idea what how I'm going to do this. So I just kind of did what I did last time, and it kind of worked out. All right, I was kind of um, kind of impressed myself, you'd say. I was kind of ple pleasantly surprised on how it turned out. So here's a little um, thing on how I did that. And just remember, always be prepared for something coming up. Let's jump into this exciting episode right now. Is I'll show you too. Um, you know, we had that fire that just burned through Napa County here. Um, let me go to one sign that uh, sticks in my mind here. It's a six nine one. It's up on uh, Pope Canyon Road, I believe. Barrios and Knoxville Road. Mile marker like eight or something like that. Yeah, here we go, 8.01. So here's the sign right here. Okay, so this is the picture that I took before. Okay, the BKV stands for Barrios and Knoxville Road. I didn't have my little white board with me that day. And that's the sign right there, 691. And it has heat damage. So when we come back to make a claim for this and get paid back by FEMA or whoever, we have documentation before. And you look at it and you go, well, there's nothing really wrong with that sign. It looks pretty good. Uh, let's click up a little bit more. You can see, especially this one, see all this wrinkled right here and how this is all wrinkled up? That's all heat damage, which it's done. It, it, the heat has damaged that sign and it's going to have to be replaced because it's probably going to lose some of its reflectivity and that sign just is not going to last anymore. So we can go back and I can look at the, the history of this sign. Um, let's go back to the main page. It was installed by a contractor on Barrios and Knoxville Road. Um, the last time the sign was replaced was in 9-3-2015. Uh, so almost five years ago, we had replaced, the sign was replaced. Um, it, it tells what kind of sheeting was on it, the size of the sign, the road it was on, and, uh, and all that. So this is a real valuable tool when we come back to, uh, to search for those. Now, what, what I want to do, if I want to come in and search for some... Uh, so I'm going to come in here, and I want to filter these by a project. Pro here we go, projects. And it was 2020 fire. The signs that are fire damaged are going to be listed on here. So as you can see up this road, we had plenty of signs that were damaged. Out onto this road, we had plenty of signs that were damaged. So pretty much every one of those has already been categorized, and it's got a um, plan for it. Like say this sign here, for example. This is a narrow winding road. This is sign number 672. In order to find the picture before, you always have to go into your edit mode. And then um, you can find the pictures that were attached. Okay, so this one here, BKV, Barry S. and Knoxville Road. I didn't have my whiteboard with me. Um, sign number 672. As you can see, the, the damage was pretty extensive on this one. It, it just basically melted it all down. It, 
kind of looks like it could be from a, a foreign country like a written in a foreign language or something so as you can see everything around it burned but the post is still good metal post and um, so so we just go from there so um, again this is a you know pretty valuable tool so I have all my my signs up there and you can also come in and edit anything you need to under this um, so here's all my um, fire damage signs again under here and it also gives you the ability instead of having to click the sign itself to having to click each one and edit it you can also edit it here if you find your sign number um, in in here uh, we'll just uh, pick one here like say this one all you have to do is um, come into here just double click them and see it's got drop downs in and you can change it to whatever you need to change it to um, so it's a pretty good valuable tool so this is kind of how we're tracking our fire fire signs from now and then um, let me show you some before and afters here here's another sign that we had replaced on Mulford uh, 2820 it had a no outlet sign okay and it also had a um, Here's the original one. It was a stop sign. It, it obviously is no good anymore. Um, here's a sign, um, 2820. This used to be the no outlet sign. I took it off and we're gonna put it all on one post. And I was just showing documentation where the other sign used to exist. So here's another one that used to be um, 2821. Um, as you can see, it basically just melted this thing away and it burnt the post. As you can see, all the guardrail around it just damaged, just devastated area um, and here's another one the 2821 this shows the um, street signs all the work that, that was done to that sign in the past so there's all the history of that sign still attached to this and then I took a um, after photo and you can see the Mulford up there the no outlet I had uh, redone new stop sign new post and there's my um, sign marker that shows, you know, before, after 2819. So there's all my documentation that's been done and it's saved on here. So we really don't have to um, worry about anything else going on. That was a, uh, some of these files. It just depends on which file you upload. Like if you have one of four collected right there. And if you choose a file, it'll keep it onto that sign number four. So you've got to kind of watch which um, sign number you're addressing them to. Uh, this was the uh, the no outlet sign that was missing now, 2820. So we have documentation of all the signs that are in there. And I think sign number two has all the information on it that we had before. So there's a little um, insight on how our tracking program works. And you can always just come into these. And like I said, they have drop down menus and you can just make your... Um, who, who built it, who made it, the size of it, the sheeting you use. Um, it has down here dates when stuff was last replaced. Uh, treatments, you can come in here and click treatments. I have a bunch of preloaded ones that I always use and it's just a simple drop down menu. Really s simple and easy to use. Here's an another sign that's here. This is an icy sign and it has a picture of it too. As you can see, here's my um, sign ID number 378, mile post marker 4.500 on Barry S and Knoxville Road. This is before okay as you can see the sign is toast it's there's nothing left of it. it it took some pretty serious heat damage so you can go back and look at the history of the sign before what kind of post it was on um, it'll tell you when I last replaced the sign I replaced the sign in May of 20 May 21st 2018 so that sign was just barely over two years old and it got damaged so you know it had a good 12 years left in it probably because that sign doesn't see a lot of sun because we turn it all the time um, when it's icy uh, we'll turn it so it's facing traffic as you can see the road here so it has its back to you so when it does turn icy you take it and you face it towards the road but there's some of my documentation that I have on my fire signs and I think we're, we're on the right track as far as being able to track this and to look back and to see the history of the sign and that's what it's all about when it comes time for for emergencies like this or events you want to call it I call it an event a fire event um, I have all my documentation I went through this in 2017 and I learned a lot from that fire so when FEMA came in the last time they looked at my records and they said oh my god those are great that's exactly what we need so 
this is what um, we have. And, and I hate to be ready for stuff like this. Well, I, I, I can't say I hate to be ready for it, but I, I hate to have to use my readiness. That's the new word for today, readiness. But you have to be ready for stuff like this and you have to have a plan. So like I said, when my boss came up to me and says, well, start documenting all your stuff. I thought, oh God, I got a new program. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I just says, okay. So I get in the truck and I had no clue what I was going to do. And this is what I came up with. And I think this is going to be a winner right here. Alrighty. So there's my asset trucking, tracking program. Okay, now that you have your signs all tracked and documented on a piece of paper or wherever you have them, what I had to do is I had to print out every one of those sheets. Now you have to go through and figure out which signs do I need to order. So I came up with a little spreadsheet and I have all the signs that I need listed by the MUTCD number, the size, the quantity, the sheeting, the color, um, the description, the corner radiuses, and the gauge of the sign. The gauge is the thickness of the sign. When I order these, I'll put out the spec. You know, I want all the signs ordered to MUTC specifications, whatever the size of the sign according to the radius. And the sign suppliers who make those know. Now, we're not sure if I'm going to make them or if we're going to have a company make them. So that's still kind of out in limbo, and I should know more after Labor Day weekend here. So regardless of who's going to do it, I have to know what signs to make. So I have, the, okay, right here, you see the OM3-L. That's what that sign is. So I put little signs so it, it, there's no mistakes on this. I need four of those. That's the sheeting. I want the fluorescent 3M. Um, 081 is the sheeting. That's the color. That's fluorescent yellow. That's what we use for the yellow now is the fluorescent color. So, and, and it shows the size, like here, W1-1 to the right. That's a W1-1 to the right. A corner radius, 2.25, because it's a 36 inch sign. I need four of those. W1-1 to the left, 36 inch. Um, five of those I need. So I've got these all labeled of what I need to order. When I get into the W13s, um, I need 10, 1, 4, and I have the size here, 24 inch and 18. And those will be the corner radiuses that I need for them, and that's the thickness, the gauge. Um, East Ridge, Headlands, and Berryessa Drive, these street signs, those are going to be 0.125 gauge. The sheeting that we're going to use, and we're going to use all EC film on these. We're not going to have them digitally printed because... Uh, for one thing, they don't last as long. Our signs weren't digitally printed to start with, so we want to replace what was exactly there. And if you get graffiti on them, you can't clean it. You know, you have to put graffiti guard over it and all that stuff. So with, with the EC film and the white sheeting, it's simple for us. And then here's all the signs that I need. Um, those big bureau signs, I had made 31 of those like in 2014, I think it 31 was. 31 of them, and I think 23 of them burned up or and need um, just like either a post or place. So 30, 23 out of the 31 were damaged. And I have how many I need here. And I have the size. These are 60 by 36. Some of them are 60 by 24. I think I have one that's a uh, 60 by 30 in there. Anyways, it's all there with the corner radiuses that we need, the gauge of the thickness. And then these are the asset numbers of the signs for these bigger ones here that I need. Okay. Um, so when we send this off, it'll be easy. And then I also have photos of the signs. Okay, here's one here. Um, for example, this Pleasure Cove, uh, whichever one this was. And here, here it was right here, this sign here, particular sign, uh, BOR, Bureau of Reclamations, uh, sign number eight. So I have it laid out for them. This is the sign number um, that I need, Pleasure Cove. So if I do send it off to a supplier, that's what it looks like with the color on it. It's already in a file that they can use, so all they have to do is basically send it off to their cutter planner or whatever or their cutter and cut it out, weed it out, and everything. So, so there's what the sign looks like. So I've done that, and then I even have um, some notes in here for the signs that need to be printed on both sides. This is the sign 42 by 9. I need a little gap in here because that's what the uh, um, where that's where our logo fits, and I think I have those in the uh in the layouts um i forgot where i put those anyways that's beside the point um so i have that ready to go so i have my um signs that i need and then i have to know where they're going to go so if we have a contractor install them he's not going to know where they're going to go i know where they're going to go so i came up with a sign location 
so every one of these roads now, I think I got them in mile post marker order. Yeah, uh, road name, Barry S. and Knoxville Road. Side number 2272 at mile post marker 0 0.10. It's a BOR sign, Bureau of Reclamation. Side number 11. Um, that's a post that needs two, two and a half inch um, steel posts, which we use those Telspar posts. And it shows the sign where it is. And this is all the locations. So every t every road I've gone and I've hit the mile post marker, my signs are, are listed by mile post markers. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a mile post marker at each sign. That means if there was a mile post marker, that's where my sign would be. So we've gone out, me and Jose, sign assistant extraordinaire. It's been a valuable help to me, I'll tell you. So what we do as we go on, okay, here we go, mile post marker 1.490. We drive a stake in, uh, we tie an orange and a yellow ribbon on it for our color so we know that's where a sign is. We paint it on the road. Uh, we paint like, uh, say, this uh, sign, for example, here. This um, So we go to mile post marker uh, 5.30. That's 1518. So we paint 1518 on the road. And then we'll put the sign number, you know, W151CA. It's a fallen rock. Need to just replace the post. And that's where the, uh, that's what the sign is. That's my notes, what the sign is. So this is all set up for the contractor too, if he comes in and does them. If he doesn't come in and do them, we're all set to go because I know where they are. Plus we have them all marked out on the road. So basically I'm just ready to go. So that's what I came up with for that. And I think that's a um, pretty good plan. Um, I've got my signs documented. I've got my signs where they're going to go. I got my signs if I need to order them. If I need to make them, I can just make them and go. So all set for this uh, event. All righty. Well, that'll do it for this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Like I said, always be prepared for an emergency no matter what it is. If somebody throws something at you and you're not quite sure how to do it, fake it. That's what I did. Well, not really fake it. I just winged it and came up with something. So there's a little bit on how I... Um, got ready for the, uh, replacing all the signs. Uh, if you have a couple signs, you know, it's easy to figure out where they go. But when you got hundreds of signs, over 100 signs, I think I had uh, 147 signs plus post replacements. And I think I've already replaced uh, eight of them. Uh, the, the feds weren't going to pay for it because they were private roads that weren't really, not private roads, but county roads that weren't under their jurisdiction for some reason. So you got to stay ready. Just got to stay ready, you know. So... Anyways, as always, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. <laughs>